Production funding for Making It Up North is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by the Lloyd K. Johnson Foundation. Let's get a little more light on the subject. It's about just experimenting and seeing what's going to work and what sort of surprises us in interesting ways. There's a creative energy that's I like, I like being around creative people that way. You gotta start small and go big. And it's been a work in progress and it's been amazing to see how this has grown. We want this to actually be a stepping stone for other things to come to Duluth. Wow, like look at what they created. This is incredible. This kind of structure, you don't make this anymore. You make, you know, pole buildings that are cost effective and work really well. This kind of investment in this specific land is incredible. I mean, it really started from the fact that it's just a gorgeous structure and it had been so lovingly cared for over the years that we felt this huge responsibility to keep it going. I'm Annie Dugan and this is the Free Range Film Barn. You know, we also wanted to be able to use it and so it was, it's really turned into be a wonderful thing to bring together the agricultural curiosity that my husband explores with the food farm and then the my arts background and our friends film background um, to be able to connect all of that together in a space I think has turned out to be a really rich space for exploration of the kind of things that we want to do. It's such an amazing space. We program the Free Range Film Festival here every year, so the end of June we always do a big celebration of film in all its crazy forms. So we have two minute animations about someone's socks to you know, hour long documentaries about dog grooming. I think we found that having a space that people have to get to. You know, it's a half hour drive from Duluth, two hour drive from Minneapolis. It's something where you have to put yourself in the mindset of, I'm gonna go on pilgrimage to see art. I'm gonna make that commitment to art. In that process, you sort of, you, you go on that road trip of like, okay, I'm gonna like release and let open my mind to see things that might challenge me. The other thing about it is if you're bored with something, we always say, well, just look up at the ceiling because that's really pretty. <laughs> so. Originally, the guy who built this built it for his son because his son was a little bit of a wild child. And he said, you know, I'm going to keep him down on the farm by building him this big, beautiful barn. And it was originally built as a horse barn, and then it switched over to a cow barn because the son sold all the horses and moved to Kentucky. <laughs> he didn't want to stay on the farm. So it's sort of come full circle because you know I feel like you know I had grand plans to work in a city and travel the world and um, you know be a curator in urban centers, and here I am in a barn. The title of this exhibition of Katherine Meyer's work and Christina Estelle's is Field Trials 2, because this is the second year we're doing it. I think that uh, certainly Katherine Meyer's work resonates with the space really well because she's interested in 
wide open spaces. She did this work when she was out in South Dakota for the solar eclipse. This isn't just a unidirectional conversation, this is a 360 conversation. Field Trials is about collaboration and not so much like it has to be done, it has to be perfect. It's about just experimenting and seeing what's gonna work and what sort of surprises us in interesting ways. So we're going to the basement of the barn. So the barn is actually built into a hill. So there's three stories. So we were at the upstairs section, the main section when you walk in, and then it actually, because it's built into a hill, you have this really fascinating basement section. And this year we have Christina Estelle's work. She'll paint the surface of um, a rock outcropping in Duluth, and then, um, and then it cures, and then she can peel it away and get a mold, basically, of these rock outcroppings. These walls were poured in 1918, and they're, they just have such character to them. Um, and so to have the rock outcroppings on top of the concrete, to me, is just feels really interesting and feels really good. So it's been really nice the schedule that we've had for the visual arts installations here, because with the film festival, like we show the films and it's done, but the space doesn't really change. But with the artwork, it comes down and then we go into winter. And so it, it's sort of like putting the barn to bed. We are trying to spark curiosity and wonder in the world. And how wonderful to be able to do that through film, how wonderful to be able to do that through art. Um, we're having a dinner tonight uh, with folks from California who are interested in local economies. So we're doing it with economic studies. I mean, I think I love the fact that this has become a space for that kind of exploration. You know, no matter what avenue it takes, it's going to be, you know, something different and fun. So this is the basement of the former Norwegian Lutheran Evangelical Church that started in 1903. I was looking for a bigger space that wasn't my home or you know, part of my homestead. And this is definitely bigger. I'm Betsy Bowen. I'm a woodcut artist and book illustrator and we are in my uh, studio gallery in Grand Marais. The very first memory I have is about a box of crayons. I re remember the way that all those little specks of color looked on the cardboard of the box, because every time the crayon bumps it, there's this, this little speck of color. And I, I, remember, I remember that. I can still see that in my mind. So I, it strikes me that I've just always had that interest. And Voila. My son Jeremy works with me. He's the printer. He's like the right hand man, but he's actually, I think, both hands. It's a lot of kind of planning and time to get a big print done. He's been doing that for 25 years for me and uh, has a great eye for color. This yellow background is the, the first color we did. And then last is the black that goes on top. Turns into a pretty birch tree print. Like, we just don't like little goobers in the margins. 
It's those little things and, and Betsy's fingerprints. <laughs> I like doing it. I like making stuff. <laughs> so back here, my, my featured show for this studio tour is work from the archives. So this goes back 50 years. And this watercolor is, I, I don't even remember doing that one. This bin is all the original um, paintings from um, the Lost Forest. This is the whole storyboard from a book called Burr and Hamilton. I did another book with this poet. The poems were short lines and I thought they were tall so I made the, I suggested that the book be long and skinny like that too. So I've been digging through and you know discovering things for me it's been really fun. I put a, a lot of it in a, in a book. So this is age zero to 72. But to have it all together, that's, that was really, I'd been trying to do that for a long time and it finally did it. So this is, really, this effort is related to that, of finding um, just what, how did I get here? What's upstairs? What's upstairs? Well, okay, there's more. Lots of creative people up here. North House is the most recent new renter. So this was the main door to the church back when, and it was the, the community theater for 35 years, and it was the main door for that too. Anyway, this is uh, Melissa Wickwire Clay Studio, and she makes a lot of um, tiles, which we have downstairs. And in here are four artisans that are here um, on, as part of a program with North House Folk School. So we can come look. Mike Loeffler makes these really cool bird bowls and lots of shavings and furniture. Josh makes boats. Well, he's pretty well underway with this kayak project. And Mary Beth makes brooms and, and dustpans. Super cool stuff. And then um, Elise has a, a lot going on in here. Holy cow. Yeah, we could go up in the loft and look down at everyone. Oh, that'd be fun. This is Puppet World up here. This is um, Good Harbor Hill Players. We can make stormy weather. Animals. Pretty sure that the bears um, eat the salmon. Stilter girls wore these. So this was on top of their head. They were wonderful. You know, did their kind of crane dances. I like to see something happen. I like to see something be made out of nothing. Whether it's transforming a space into a, an acted out story with big puppets or whether it's, you know, transforming a piece of paper into a woodcut or a shabby building into something pretty great. There's the creative energy that's, I like, I like being around creative people that way because there's something, you know, there's a search for something new, something that hasn't happened before and they're making it, they're, they're gonna figure it out. I think I open doors. I think that's what I do, you know. I just open the door. I gotta get around, man. Hey, yeah, hey, let's get let, let's get you mic'd up. Let's get you mic'd up. Uh, yeah. All right, come on through. Come on through. This is how you do it in the studio in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dog. Pull up in the snow. Yeah, dog. Got that right there. Boom. Get you mic'd up.
Boom. When I hit the rhymes, everybody know that I get it poppin'. This ain't no lie. Nah, I'm from the loop, Minnesota. Yeah, you know the Minnesota way. Boom. Snowmobiles coming to the stove. You know what it do. We work with pretty much all types of genres, but primarily it's hip hop, solo artists, R and B. So. My name is Victor Martinez. This is Pinnacle Point Studios. I'm co-founder and engineer, audio engineer here at the studio. Uh, my name is Anthony Miller. I am co-owner, co-founder of Pinnacle Point Studios. This is one of our hangout rooms. This we consider this Studio B. We got Studio A. This is Victor's main spot right here, our head engineer. This is where a lot of the magic happens, a lot of it. We got the vocal room right here. So we got you in here. We got one person here. We'll, we'll lay them down right here. Open it up. If we got a bigger crowd, this is where you really relax, really collaborate, really get your mind straight in here. We, we like to hang out in here, watch a little TV, maybe do some writing. Today, we're just kind of hanging out. The main thing we'll be try to create here is the vibe, you know, to try to have a place where that people can come and they can feel comfortable. Um, and then just being patient with people, that's the big thing. When you bring a vibe to a certain place or a certain area even, other people see that and they might want to hop on our bandwagon too and be involved with that and it grows and it, and it helps the community, it helps everybody and it helps everybody shine and show their character and get out there. Yeah. It's catchy. It is catchy. Well, well, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I deal with anxiety, depression and post-traumatic stress and I feel like Music's also a therapy. For me, it's not a solve all, but I feel like it can be a positive force in, in my life and others. And I feel like I've kind of been an advocate for, for that. Yeah, be out here grinding every night. You can find me in the studio late night. Anybody who comes through the studio, I like it. I'm, I, I'm gonna like it because why? I'm supporting them. This is where I go. This is how I get this stuff off my brain. When we have people in here, uh, you know, we have the door that's completely signed with all the artists that we've worked with. And it's just, the atmosphere is just wonderful. Like people come in here and they're happy and they're creating music. And it's like almost like a little time capsule. Cause when you're in here, it feels like, you know, maybe an hour and then you realize you've been in here six hours making music. And that's when you know that that's the place where you're supposed to be. So this one we just did. They did he just released this. Uh, this, is a, this is a country singer. Uh, but he just he just released a music video to this. We tracked all the vocals on this song here. I was like the fact he used his whole family, you know? You know, we got a great team here. Okay, so we have other engineers and producers and Anthony. So it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to have that team behind you. There ain't no competition, and if they hit, I'm stepping on the head. He adds a lot of flair to this. He adds a lot of excitement. Um, he adds positive vibes. He, he adds a lot of experience as far as um, marketing goes. And uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to, to work with him and uh, have him believe in me and, and create this together. We connect. Our vibe is really, really good, and we connect very, very well. And I think when we're together, we could bring that to the community to have people work with you. you. Got some kind of vibe going on. You got a good vibe going on. And I felt that we were just perfect for that. We both do two completely different things. We're completely different people. But when it when it comes to this right here, we're locked in. I was like, well, I got this aspect of it. You got this aspect. I was like, let's just do it. Let's do it and get more people involved in this and 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 build it and, and see where it goes. Gotta, gotta get that cash right. Gotta, gotta get that cash right. Cash right. Gotta get that, get a cash right. What I try to project is the love of music and being around music. And you're taking something that didn't exist at all and creating something new. I feel like this is a real blessing having this here. 
for the community, which is one of the reasons we had talked about this, me and Anthony, almost seven years ago. Making it right now, just being successful and helping others is, the, is probably the, the easiest way for me to put that. I'm hoping to just keep keep progressing and just keep pushing forward. Gotta, gotta get the cash right, cash right, cash right. Hey. My dad, as I was growing up, said, don't let the money stop you from whatever. He was self-employed, so I guess I had a sense that you didn't have to work for someone. That wasn't your what you were meant to do. Whenever you can jostle people a little bit in your brain and shake that brain around a little bit, I think it's successful art. People want to be in community with each other in with art. Like there's just something that about it that still calls for that connection with other people when you're seeing it. When you're vibing out with a client and they're hearing their music professionally mixed and mastered and you see them smile and you see them happy, that's, that's the moment where you're like, yeah, we've, we're there.